everybody, it is Jaeger coming to you from the familiar backyard for people who've been around this channel for a little while. So this is part from my audio podcast I've posted about advertising possibly for free on old school radio, terrestrial radio, as they say in the biz. I was on radio for about 20 years, so I got all these kind of terms kind of floating around up here. And by doing trade deals, you can maybe get your business, your product, your service, something advertised on radio for little to no cost or maybe just a cost of time. It's not quite that simple. I break it down on this podcast. I didn't mean to be video. So this is just meant to be just an audio clip on the podcast that you can get out of Spotify, iTunes, and all those places. But I thought it had so much value. We'll just throw it up here on YouTube. So maybe it can help some of you out for whatever you want to do as far as advertising, possibly on the radio. On to our main topic of this podcast. One of the things I've been doing for years is advertising on radio as we call it terrestrial radio the old school radio i remember years ago where a co-worker got at sam or serious paid radio and another co-worker said this is the competition what are you doing this is gonna kill us and i was like no it won't kill us terrestrial is free we were both right and wrong i was right on the side of if it's free you're not gonna beat it which terrestrial radio is he was right on the side of well, it wasn't the paid radio. It was the free internet. <laughs> That's how long ago this conversation was. Late 2000. Well, it was definitely 2000. Not much further past 01, 02. Um, and here we go. Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, the internet revolution. Whatever you're listening to this podcast on right now came in as the free one to not kill off terrestrial radio, but definitely give it a ding and a hit. So I say all that with the pretext of some are going to tell you that these old school ways of advertising are dead. Some are going to tell you that they still work. Obviously, I'm doing it. So I think that it still has value to it. So people who say I don't listen to the radio anymore i just listen to whatever is on my phone or as i call it in the carolina photography podcast <laughs> the mp3 player because <laughs> i just completely lost what decade i was living in and by the way i'm also talking about sales on winning packages so check that podcast out over there carolina photography podcast but people who don't listen to radio do believe not everybody obviously that would be silly there's a fair number who thinks that just because they don't listen no one listens you guys you, your person, you, you are your person. You are yourself. Not speaking for everyone. There is still a large number who has no working CD player or music device in a vehicle, don't care, want to stay informed just to get some news, want to hear what the daily morning gossip is on their drive into work with the kids. There's features and shows that they like that they've grown up listening to and still exist. So it is still a market that if you can get into it, get into it. And as a business, you are uniquely position sometimes in radio and it's been this way forever even in small towns to some of the larger ones of course there's more competition in larger ones but that's the planet earth they do love trade they can't trade with everybody because they had to make money at some points but they do love trade if you can come in with a unique value proposition for radio stations they generally will do some kind of trade and business with you now you say well Jaeger why go through all this if this is what you've been doing? Aha, I never really actually. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing. I was like, I was going through a curveball. Oh, I've been buying for years. No, guys, I've been trading for years as well. I'm not going to kid you. Full transparency. Also, I've worked in radio for 20 years. So this is why I feel somewhat uniquely qualified um, to tell you how the inner workings of radio can be. And after crossing around and talking with other stations, yeah, <laughs> so it's just around um, my area and a, a few, of course, outside of the area. Yeah, trade is still really a big thing. Maybe not as big as it used to be at one point. There's so much more red tape with some companies about trying to trade nowadays where, you know, anything can just get abused and then rules and things start getting in place and putting in there. But yeah, and it is as simple as emailing whoever is over the sales department or whoever is in the sales department. Um, there's generally not a big line of communication or chain of people to go through on the sales side of radio. And that's kind of the business. Selling advertising is kind of the radio business model. And if you can get some trade with something unique that they don't generally have access to or something that can help them in some kind of way then do it great question someone asked me which i thought was kind of 
great only if you don't pay attention to the space. But yay, why give away the quote unquote secret of what you do? Um, I've been asked that a lot and it's a little bizarre because A, I learn from other people giving away their air quote secret for lack of a better word. And B, there is so many steps involved to try to knock out a radio ad campaign. Ooh, it was never a situation too much where the radio station would handle things on their end. Think about it this way. They can trade, but as far as having that manpower and woman power to create, write, whatever copy, that's just a test to set on the radio and actually produce. Uh, I think that's why I was always such an attractive deal because I could do all that literally in house myself, even though all my friends in radio world, it's kind of enough to let me work at the station and actually work on my own commercial to air, but everybody's not going to be in that position. But there wasn't much workload added for the radio companies for me to ever come in and do an ad campaign. What do I mean by there's a lot that goes into it? Well, for one thing, what's going to be said? The terminology and photography, and here's a pro tip. If you have too much photography terminology, take it out because regular consumers just aren't going to pick up on all that stuff. The terminology can be a bit wordy. Just the word photography. Photography is four syllables. It's not like it's too many syllables for people to pronounce, but it gets very, very terminology wordy and... If you don't really know exactly what the heck you're talking about, it might come across in the head. Um, I, there's very talented DJs who can, of course, can read anything and make it sound absolutely great and perfect. But getting that script right is going to be so much of the headache. And who's going to perform it? Will it be you? Will it be a jock who works at the station? What's the sound effects going to be? Are there going to be sound effects? Is there going to be music? What's the music? Do you have rights to music? Is it royalty free music? Are you paying for some rights to music? Is there too much music? Is there not enough music? <laughs> All of these things, the technical side of, hey, this music is way too loud that you paid for that you want people to hear. We can't really hear your voice. But in all those types of situations, not hitting the point quick enough. So there's a few things. And the problem from a photo photography standpoint, some people won't have is there's not a lot of photography radio commercials out there. So that is something where I had to go in and look at other businesses and how they did radio. And that's not that's both good and bad go outside the box but also it's like i could really just use a direct photography commercial <laughs> to see what has worked before what has failed before at least maybe just sparking an idea and those are problems that can be unique to whatever your industry is so it's definitely a thing to keep in mind when trying to pull off a radio commercial and another thing i said it was so tough about it is man even if it's trade what resources are you giving up? Do you have to pay for those shirts for your t-shirt company that you've traded? Do you have to pay for in time? And do you have to put uh, tear on, and wear and tear on your equipment to edit if you were a photographer doing video for a radio station for a trade? So free even has air quotes and, <laughs> and ashes beside it because there is a good bit that goes into it. The days of, hey, I'm just going to do this, make this decision, and everybody else make it happen. Not quite. You've got to be able to sign off on what's your schedule. You don't know when your best time to run is. How can you know if you've never done it before? These are all questions that are going to have to get straightened out. People in radio and marketing, they'll help you as far as they can. But if you're in a unique business where there isn't a whole lot of research and data, well, everybody's just kind of winging this thing a little bit at that point. That's something to keep in mind. I'm sure I can even... Remember all the other little tidbits that go into trying to put a radio ad campaign together. How long will you be on air? What's your budget going to be to be on air? How long does it take? Because it takes a little while to try to penetrate the zeitgeist and try to get your name out there and to try to build this awareness that you're hopefully trying to do. Are you going to try to bring value over the airwaves to people? Is there a sale or promotion going on? Oh, my gosh. It's like I'm remembering things as I go through this. So getting in touch, let's get ready to shut this podcast down. Just get in touch, see if any radio stations are interested in a trade deal for what you want to do. It's going to be a fantastic move, and you will go from there. However, that's just a start. There is a ton of work to work through before you get in there. However, I hopefully have not discouraged anybody. That is never my goal. 
if you have a shot, give it a shot. Any other friends, videographers, photographers, I have no problem with listening to some of my old scripts and radio. I actually played a couple in my other podcast, Carolina Photography, from January. No problem if you're looking at that, getting inspired, taking some dialogue from that and putting it in your own words. Zero issue with that at all. As a matter of fact, I've already heard it happen. <laughs> I actually overheard a commercial, which was points were four minute in a similar order as mine. Could it be a coincidence? <laughs> Highly unlikely. Um, A few years ago, and I was actually just kind of flattered by it. Imitation is a serious form of flattery. I didn't ever hear that commercial again, so I don't think it did very well for them. And I hope they made a trade it and didn't lose money. <laughs> and I do not remember exactly who the company was. I'm not even lying to you. I, I do not recall uh, what photographer it was I was doing that but um up and to them they probably had no idea it was somebody just taking a uh, kind of template of my commercial <laughs> I'm, I'm really not precious about this, precious about this stuff at all especially because I don't I do it so rarely every now and then I might pull my hair out over it but I am putting it in my own words um and I might pull my hair out over performing because for some strange art reason reading off of pages is tough for me and I've just kind of blessed and fortunate enough that I can talk on my own commercials and I know this is not an option for everybody um whew, but there's a lot of arms I should I should probably go ahead and wrap this up now I'm arming to death I actually I'm about to go put some hot dogs on <laughs> so hopefully uh this is some useful advice this is what podcasts are really really good for in my opinion these kind of long form things and I am not promoting this podcast too heavy if you find it you found it Thanks for subscribing. Um, I was about to say subscribe. Hit that like button. I forget I'm not on YouTube right now. I'm just in audio land right now. No video to go with this one right here. And I love every money. I will be in touch with you a little bit later on in life. Oh, I did say we got a, a thing coming up. The Jaeger Shots Podcast. I do believe, knock on Airwood, not knock, is going to be going live for the first time since I did the first podcast in 07. Oh my gosh, I'm so terrified, nervous, scared, and excited all at the same time. And we're going to have some good friends on there. That's always been the root of the show, having friends on. And they will talk photo-related stuff and what business they have going on, too. I've worked with some before. I hope you enjoy it. And keep listening. They will be on this space right here where you listen to this very podcast. If you only listen to the audio version, they will be on the Facebook, which has been neglected by me somewhat. I'm going to actually have them on there, YouTube. It'll be rebroadcast. Uh, as they say in the business, it'll be on demand, over the top. So <laughs> this is a fancy way of saying, yeah, it'll be on YouTube, and you can watch it at your leisure there as well. So we will have video. We will have audio on the podcast networks, your Apple Music, your Spotify's. Whew, 2021. I'm, I'm very excited, like, I am so excited. It is kid on Christmas excitement to go live. It is such a rush doing live stuff. And I've been getting my foot in the body in forget my foot in the body. <laughs> Dipping my toe in the water. Get my foot in the water. Get my feet wet. And I think we're gonna take the training wheels off. Okay, y'all, I'm out of analogies right now. <laughs> I'm gonna speak with everybody a little bit later on in life and good luck with your radio ad campaign.